right, this is a solution to problem sweepstakes. Uh, in this problem, we are given a rectangular minefield. As you can see, we have a minefield here with particular probabilities that each of the uh, squares has a mine in it. And these probabilities are all independent. They, the mines have been placed already. We do not know which squares the mines have been placed into, only the probabilities where they were placed. And we do know the total number of mines that were placed after the fact. So that is a, a, a post condition on the number of mines. The grid is up to 500 by 500, so it's a very large grid. And what follows the description of the grid is a series of queries. As you can see, we have here the red is a query. It is a particular selection of squares that could be scattered anywhere on the grid. And what we want to know is what is the probability of having a certain number of mines in, in that set. So um, first of all, the first part of this problem deals with just figuring out what the probabilities are asking. So you can think of a distribution such as this of um, the probability, given all of these probabilities of placing mines, what is the probability that you have zero mines in the entire grid? Or what is the probability that you have one mine, two mines? I'm calling T the entire grid. Uh, all the way up to you know, the size of t. And then similarly, you have the probabilities of having zero all the way up to the size of s mines in s. Now, the question that is actually being asked is, given that we know, given that we know how many mines are in t here, what is the probability of having n mines in s for each n? And uh, uh, an application of Bayes' rule in probability will tell us how to compute this. We need to compute two distributions. So we have to compute a distribution on S. We have to uh, compute a distribution on T without S. And we also have a constant here across all of the queries, which is the probability that the overall probability that we have T mines total in, in T, which we already know has occurred. So this is, this is the total problem space. And then this divides up the problem space into each of the things that we care about there. OK, so that, that is the probability, that is the math part of this solution. However, it's a very difficult problem to actually get this to run in time, because there is a, a dynamic programming way to calculate these probabilities. You can start with a, a distribution that just contains one. The probability of having zero mines is one. And then you can add the mines one by one using dynamic programming to figure out what this distribution is. If you add the mines one by one, you eventually end up with the correct distribution. However, that's going to run too long for t without s, because t without s is a very large set. It's up to 25,000 25, um, minus 500. So how do we do this? There are a couple of ways. One involves a deconvolution using a fast Fourier transform. And I'm not going to go too far into that, because that is a bit of a trap, unfortunately. Uh, there are many numerical stability issues with that solution, and I think teams might stumble into that trap trying to solve this. Another way is to try to cheat a little. So the problem looks like it is an online problem where you're trying to solve one query at a time. However, you can cheat by, in fact, using the structure of the queries. So suppose that I, I'm just labeling the squares with particular numbers. Suppose that we have queries that look like this. We can put them into a balanced binary tree and uh, you take the union at each node of all of the queries within its subtree, like this. Um, and we can compute a distribution of all of the mines that do not appear at the top node. So that is our starting distribution. And then as we go down each of these edges, we add in all of the mines here that are not in here. So in this case, we would be adding in mines uh, or sorry, we, the other way around. We are adding all the mines that are here, but not in here. So in this case, we are adding in the mines two and three, because they do, they do not appear in this subtree, even though they are in this root. So as we go down, we are adding in the mines two, three, and then we are adding in the mines um, here, we would be adding in five. And so what we would be left with is everything except for one, four, which is the T without s that we wanted. So if we look at the total size of all of the queries, the total size of the queries is 500 times 500. The height of the tree is log n. So you can, you can approximately multiply this by log n. This is the number of mine additions we are going to do. This is almost fast enough. The one final observation we need to make is that uh, we, cannot, uh, we cannot do the entire space of numbers of mines all the way up to 
25,000 because uh, uh, there are, that is a very large set. However, the number of mines is going to cluster very, very closely around the average number of mines that you would expect to find in that set. So we can, in fact, so if the distribution is supposed to look like this, um, it's very small to the left and the right. And, it, and most of the probability is centered in the, in, in the middle. So we can pick a window of, say, 5,000 around the average, around the mean number of mines. And then we can only compute to the distribution here. And once you put all of those into effect, then you, you, your program will probably run in time and you have a solution. Thank you.